Hey guys, it's Jan again. I've had some people asking me about my workflow process going from my design software to Easel and finally to the Onefinity controller. So I thought I'd use this opportunity because I have to cut this name out and to create a mini tutorial. It won't be too long and hopefully you get all the information you want. So the first thing you want to do is uh, create your artwork. Now it's important to keep it a solid color with no outlines as Easel has difficulty with different colors and it doesn't load properly. So once you've designed it, you want to go to File, Export or Save As, depending on the software you're using. You can use any vector program really for this, Illustrator, Inkscape, etc. And then you want to save it as an SVG file. And we'll save it as Emma. Now if you'd like me to go into more detail about de actually designing things, uh, just let me know and I'll try to make another video for that at a later date. And then once that's finished saving, you want to move over to your Easel software. Okay, so if you have not set up your Easel software with your Onefinity yet, this is how to go about it. You go to Machine, and under this, you go to Other, Gribble, Model, Other, and then here, you want to select the cutting area that the Onefinity supports. So you have 32.25, and as you see, as you edit it, it'll change in the background, and again, 32.25. Five. And once that's done, you just click outside the box. Now up here, where it says MDF, yours might say Birch Plywood. This is your working file, so your actual piece that you're putting down. And the piece that I have is actually 18 inches wide by 12 inches tall and 0 0.5 inch thickness. The material type that you see here it does not matter for the Onefinity users. It's merely aesthetic, if anything. So you have an idea how it's going to look uh, for X-Carve and etc. It has actually sets up uh, your cut settings too automatically. But since the Onefinity can handle higher numbers, we will actually adjust that later. So to import your file, you want to go to File, Import SVG. find your file, click open, boom, there it is. Since we're cutting right down to the bottom, you want to click this or drag this bar all the way down. We're not clearing out a pocket, we're going to clear outside of the shape, and that'll give you a little preview here. If you click with your left mouse and hold it, you can move it around like this. If you right click and move it, it pans the camera like that. And the scroll mouse zooms in and out, giving it a better look. So I don't use tabs, that's a personal preference for MDF as it's cutting through the lines, uh, especially if you use down cut, it holds it in place because the dust particles stay there. So, but if you're using plywood or hardwood, you want to use tabs because there's nothing worse than getting to the end and then the piece moving. I like to center my material just so that gives me a good view of everything. So once you do that, you want to go over here to the bit section. And under bits, I'm going to be using the 1 8th. But if you have a quarter inch you want to pop in, what you do is go here, type in 0 0.25 inches, and then just click anywhere outside and it'll adjust it accordingly. For cut settings, just to give you an idea, this is the recommended feed rate for MDF by one uh, easel, 49 and 0 0.0625. So the one that I am using is 90. You can actually go even higher, but I find 90 is a good number. Plunge rate is just how fast it goes into the wood. And this is the depth per pass, or how much it's cutting in each pass. I go 0.25. Once you do that, click Simulate. and it'll give you a higher res rendering of the actual finished piece. These red lines indicate 
the router movement and the blue lines indicate the actual cut. So if you press play, it'll actually show you the movement. It just goes to the A and it starts cutting it out as the entrance blue. Alright, so once we got that figured out, we want to create the actual cut file itself. So to do that, you go to Machine, Advanced. Uh, we'll leave this alone for now. Uh, in another video, we can talk more about that. This is a simple cut. We want to generate the G code, and then export G code. Now, here's the untitled. So the reason why it says untitled is because we did name it up here. If you had wanted to name it, you would just click this. Type in whatever name you want and save or save changes. Sorry. Once you have your .nc file, you move over to your Winfinity interface. You click this folder button. You find the .nc file. So it's important to note. Uh, the controller only supports .nc files. Don't upload anything else from other softwares. It'll uh, cause this controller to stall and you have to reboot. So what it's doing now is doing a quick check for the code and creating a 3D render right here. This 3D render will like they show up like this as a small image. To make it bigger, you just click that. This also will only show up if you're using a remote connection to your controller. The tablet that comes with it will never show this. So once you've got that loaded up, you want to make sure you've homed your X and Y, and then you've set your Z. Don't forget to remove the magnet. Make Turn on the Makita and uh, press play, and you should get your cut going. If you have any other questions or anything, let me know. I'll definitely see if I can help out. Thanks.